anyone can do this. I can, if I, if mm-hmm. we go to lunch, Cody, and we go, and I go talk to the person that brings our food out. I don't care what restaurant it is. And the person is nice and they're friendly and then thank you so much. And they see maybe they're working a double shift that day. I'm confident. And as long as they're just go and they seem nice and they're coachable, I'm confident I can turn that person into a six, any one of those people into a six figure income producer at least at minimum. Like I'm dead confident. That's why I go around and I'm just like, you know, I don't try to steal people from their jobs, but I'm like, Hey, I think you'd be great doing what we do. I mean, you, you are, thank you so much for great service. I think you're, you know, you're, I'm doing a sales pitch. I'm doing a lead pitch now. You know, I think you're great at what you do. You do amazing, you know, in our company. And now if they're interested, they would say, Oh, what do you do? What's your company? If they weren't, mm. I allow them to That's either good. take it or not. And the, if they're like, oh, thanks, thank you. Like if, if they're not interested and they're happy where they are, they'll just say thank you and they won't say anything else. Good but point. most people are going to inquire, you know, and... And then from there, it's just kind of like, that's how, that's the, people think, where do I find my next best shining star? Man, you know how much money I've spent on Indeed and ZipRecruiter? And we find plenty of good people from there, but some of the best people you meet in person because you get to see how driven they are. You, you know, you can go with your gut and be like, I don't know, but this person's got something. Like I, I want to take a chance on them, you know? Yeah. Welcome back to the CA Power Player Podcast. I'm your host, Cody Haskins. Today's special guest, all the way from Vero Beach, Florida. The dude is a total gangster and doing amazing things, making a ton of money at such a young freaking age. He pretty much, with him and his buddy James, they revolutionized telesales with Senior Life Services, is now on the executive team as the CSO. Please welcome to the channel, amazingly for the first time ever, which is crazy and I feel bad for, Mr. Grant Doherty. Yay! Thank you, Cody. You, had, you had your own like little applause <sighs> in, in, in the studio there. That was good. I know. Um, Keep it down over there, you guys. We're trying to hang out and talk. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> um, no, thanks for having me. It's Dude, actually thank you. my first time in Missouri. Believe it or not, crazy. I know. Yeah, I'm I, actually I, being a bad friend. I should. I should apologize. I will apologize. If you guys agree? If he's being a bad friend, let us know in comments below. Oh, come on. No. Well, <laughs> no. Co- get well, him. You, get <laughs> him. I, know, I deserve to be got. <laughs> now you've been down to down to Vera Beach or Head HQ a few times. You, you obviously. How many? At, I mean, what? At least three. Yeah. At least three to yeah. headquarters, and yeah. obviously, you've been on. We've been on a few trips together. So. Dude, y'all do. I'm telling you guys, Senior Life Services does the best freaking trips in the industry. Are you just? You're probably just saying that, though. Well, no, dude, I said in front of everybody. Okay. I can say I mean, it to you, I, but I, I can see. Say I it. think that, but my opinion doesn't. Now matter. I just said in front of 102,000 people. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's. I mean, we we spend a lot. I think we spent. It's, dude, I mean, and God, I mean, over a quarter million dollars on the trip. Everything they go to is like five star, five diamond. 17 triple a star rated whatever that is freaking crazy well i mean it's evolved over the and y'all pay for everything we we do we do pay which is wild we do pay for the whole thing yeah it's 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 you i'm 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 like i'm very fortunate like dylan and i typically if we can make it work date wise we hang out with y'all in orlando for your event in january we also typically go international with y'all in july Mm -hmm. um so for those that are like okay before we get into your story specifically they're like okay I'm, i'm hearing about the company who who is what what is senior life services <clears throat> well, I'll try to give you somewhere in between the, I won't give you the wrong version, <clears throat> but basically uh, my dad moved to Vero Beach from Western Pennsylvania back in, I think like 1970, late 77, you know, oh. he moved down here with $200 in his pocket and an old, he always like in a white Volkswagen Beetle, that's what he says. And uh, <laughs> he, you know, he was going to apply at the, this other company near, like it's like at the airport, they did aviation stuff, didn't get the job. And applied somewhere else, didn't get the job. <clears throat> Ended up getting hired at a place called Florida Insurance Services by a guy named John Racine. And my dad was asked, you know, in the interview, how many, how many, you know, people work here? And my dad was the only agent there, his first agent. And my dad's goal was like, I just want to make thirty grand, you know, which obviously back then was more, but still, it's my dad's like, I just want to make thirty grand. It's always kind of, you yeah. know, wasn't thinking as big as he is now. Obviously, gets hired. Long story short. <clears throat> top salesperson. I mean, like, like as far as industry wide, like he's crushing it. He's won all these awards, 23 straight years, personal sales, wow. um, ends up when the guy passes away, he buys the the company full insurance services from his late wife. Um, 
you know, we, we are doing other things like annuities and long-term care, things like that. We had a whole senior market division. And back, it wasn't until like 96 until uh, Senior Life Services was birthed, uh, mm. which is, you know, subsidiary of um, to Florida Insurance Services. And so a whole new company was birthed out of that because we realized, hey, you know, final expense is kind of doing really well. We didn't dissolve all the other stuff at first. It just kind of slowly, mm -hmm. you know, faded. But now y'all do just a little bit of final expense. Yeah, well, that's all we do now. But he does, yeah, just a little bit. You're going to make me blush, Cody. Come on. How I much? I don't like bragging. How much? We're, well, we're going to be, we're getting close to four, the 40 million number. We're doing probably 37 mil going to clear this year. And so freaking crazy. It, it's it's that's definitely awesome. getting exciting. And, and that's only with, you know, that's under 400 agents. Yeah. That, that, here, here's, here's one thing I've noticed. Okay. This is, this is really important. Um, SLS has done a phenomenal job of maximizing production per person. Mm -hmm. Y'all probably have as high of a production per agent, arguably more than every other company in the industry. I wouldn't disagree with that. Why and how? Okay, that's a good question. Well, we, we, my dad, of course, but amongst other people, Henry and James, we all, we focus a lot on what we call PPA, which is premium per agent. <clears throat> We're, it's funny when you focus on something, it just, it just gets better. It can happen. Yeah. Well, absolutely. Well, we focus a lot on training. Um, my buddy Bradley always says training isn't something that you did. It's something that you do. It's something that you do every day True that. and just kind of change your mindset towards, towards training. Cause you know, the word training has got like a bad mm -hmm. stigma to it. It's like, oh, I'm going through training. Oh, that sucks. You know? That's yeah. kind of the stigma behind training, but training True. is something that we should always be doing. You know, I remember seeing Tim Grover at 10X2, you're at 10X2. Mm -hmm. Tim Grover said, you know what Michael Jordan does? At the beginning of every practice, and was listening, he goes, an effing chest pass. He's like, you don't think Michael Jordan knows how to throw a chest pass? But the point was, you know, you always focus on, and, and you know, you never forget fundamentals. You're always training, you stay sharp. Iron sharpens iron, get 1% mm -hmm. better every day. It's not just learning. It's it's you have to, there has to be application of that learning every day, and you know when you do that, your results will get better. And um, you know people do like someone I forget who said I was a speaker that spoke somewhere and they said, or it might be in the name of a book I don't know. It says you know results don't get better people do. Mm. You know or salespeople don't get better, people do. And so we're big proponents of like, hey, we invest in each person. For me- you do. And one thing about me, like with my team, I, I like I'm on Zoom every day, as you know, and I'm sure like most people are uh, from eight to nine. And then um, I have up to 50, 15 minute slots of my salespeople. The only rule is don't waste my time. Mm. My time is valuable. It's not an arrogant thing. My you I mean your time should be valuable. If you're not valuing your time, by the way, value your time. You make a pretty good amount per hour too, by the way. So yeah, well, you're right. Your time, your time is valuable, and it's True. but but also I always say people say time is money, but I I, I flip the script. I say well, money is time because mm. money money buys time. Yeah, it does. and people don't like to really think about that. But um, yeah, because then you can start delegating. You can expand. You can yeah. hire. You can yeah, yeah hundred percent. Yeah. In a lot of ways, you can have other people do stuff. You know? Yep, absolutely. So, so that's why I make myself available up to uh, literally up to f like I'm maxed out at 50, 15 minute time slots. This is outside of our regular wow. Zooms because awesome. each person is not a number. To me, they're, they're a valuable, precious life. Every person has a story, you know, and I know it maybe sounds corny to some people. I truly feel that way. And, and I want to help people and mm -hmm. maybe to a fault. I'm probably like an empath. And I really like when I see people's stories, it like really cuts me deeper than most people. Mm -hmm. And so I choose to see the good in people. And so I, I, I really try to, I'm like, we're going to turn you into a badass. You know, we're going to turn you into someone strong and someone that's not weak, someone that's not dependent, mm. someone that's not, that doesn't need to do this or that. Like, you don't have to do this anymore. You're not, you're going to make six figures and not just the, you could make six figures. Like, you're going to make well into your six figures. You can make quarter million dollars, 500,000, whatever it is. Like, it's just how determined are you going to be? How plugged in are you going to be? How willing are you going to be? How humble and hungry are you going to be? How coachable are you? And those are the main factors of success, in my opinion, because if you can be talented, like guys like look in the NBA, like Allen Iverson, he didn't win a ring, but you could, you know, he had a great coach. He was unbelievable. One of the best point guards you'll ever see. 
but he had a bad attitude. You know, it was like, we talking about practice, man. Remember that? Hmm. We ain't talking about the game. We talking about practice. It's like people with that attitude, I can't really help until that changes. Yeah. So I try, like, give me the underdog, you know what I'm saying? Give me the, the humble person. And then once I know their heart's open, their mind's open, they're willing to do the work, totally. we can work with that. And those people, I can teach you the X's and O's. We can teach you all the stuff is learnable. You know, we can put you around like, oh, I'm not good at sales. We'll sit next to these two people for a little bit. And as long as just don't lose this attitude, don't lose that winner's mindset and that, you know, I'm open to everything, closed off to nothing, 1% mm. better every day. Like you will get better. You know, it's not just a cliche. Like totally. I spoke to you. I had the pleasure of, thank you for letting me speak to your team earlier, by Dude, the way. Dude, you crushed it, um, by the way. You guys, let, um, you need to let him speak to your team, whoever's watching. Well, that. I'd love to. You I mean, did awesome. Absolutely. I, I, I love him. Like. Speaking of life into things, you, you're and teams. A very and like, good speaker too. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you know, when I was when I was talking to the team, I really like it energized me. Like I was only going to talk for five minutes, but then I was like, no, like they, I could, they were locked, they were taking notes. I could see a humble group of people who are who are coachable, and people who are humble and coachable are can can do anything. You know, I, and especially in our industry, man. Like mm -hmm. that's it. But so many people, they lack the confidence. They they, I talked about like the diet, like what's your diet? Like not what you're eating, but like, what do you watch? What do you listen to? What are you surrounding yourself with? Like people need more of that. Mm -hmm. People need so much more of that. Oh my gosh. And you know, we were talking about like, like, like on our team, we had people, people that were homeless that are freaking presence club producing badasses now. People who used to work at KFC and fast food joints, people, you know, dishwashers yes so on that note like you, you've had several where yes they were gonna kfc frying chicken making freaking seven bucks an hour now they're making multiple six figures you've had others that were literally bringing in duffel bags and homeless and like couldn't look you in the eye and they're like mm -hmm. shaking in the chair because they're on drugs all this other stuff whatever to making you know 10 grand a month now like yeah. you guys have a lot of those really cool success stories where you've taken someone who's extremely broken yeah and turned them into as you said a bad a yeah, I mean, absolutely. And I mean, you just got to, I mean, it depends. Some people aren't willing to, to do what comes along with that. People think, let me, f I mean, again, we've all been there. Like, let's, like, I want to hire someone with experience, with has this and that's that. There's oh, well, so much experience. But, you know, sometimes that doesn't work because they're not as coachable and um, becomes a bit of a tough situation. And a lot of people, they, they see that initially as like a low hanging fruit situation where, oh, well, they're already licensed. And so we're going to do this versus, hey, I want to teach someone just, I, I just want, if you're humble, hungry, and coachable, mm -hmm. I can teach you the rest. And if you show up, what do you say? Half the battle showing up, right? True. You know, and you know, they're not going to be taking cold showers yet, Cody, but they're, they're, they, they they might, or maybe not, but some of them might be like, hey, let's do it. Hey, I'll jump in that cold plunge. Like that's the kind of person that's I want. Way. That's just like, yes. whatever it takes to get there, whatever it takes to do it, like let's freaking go. And I just think there's a lot more people who are, hungry for that even desperate for that nowadays because people are getting laid off there's just not a lot of security around you know there's not a lot of secure places to go and the insurance industry is still one of those especially final expense like as far as i'm concerned no one's found the fountain of youth they were all looking for in the 15 1600s like no one's found the fountain of youth everyone is going to pass away everyone has you know has some sort of a funeral or burial or, or usually True. some sort of situation so final expense is what we call an inelastic market that's never going to change. It's never going to, totally. uh, it's not like, oh, the market's hot right now. Like honestly, when there's a recession, our numbers like take a slight bump up. Yes. But with, uh, and other things, it's, I mean, real estate, I love real estate, don't get me wrong. I have, you know, own some real estate, but it's like, it's like, how's the market doing? It's like, dude, real estate's hot. And when it's hot, it gets really hot. And I love tangible assets. But when it's not, and you know, you see stuff that's going on in the world right now, it's just like something can just, I can change at the yeah. drop of a hat. And I know because I have a lot of contractor friends, real estate um, broker friends that when the market wasn't good, they're like, not sure what I'm going to do. Mortgage, you know, people are doing mortgages. I have a buddy who, who's from Michigan and mm. he's doing mortgages and he's coming to work with us now. He's like, hey, awesome. he, he, I think he said he, he, he had a year where he cleared 400K and now he's like, what, what's going on right now? The interest rates, it's like, I just don't like the way it's going. And you know, he's like, I need, I'm going to come explore SLS and do that. And so, um, you know, there's a lot more people 
kind of doing that now. And so I'm, I'm pretty blessed and, and I love coming. Like I used to not, 100%. I used to love not coming to work every day, man. I love coming to work every day. Yeah. I love, well, well when you're first an agent, you know, your first year you cleared a hundred K and T talk it, through that. Cause, cause you, um, talked about like, you know, Florida insurance services, the evolution of senior life services, mm -hmm. your father, the team, certain people. Let's talk about you. Um, in your journey, you know, like who, who was Grant? How did he become this person? Mm -hmm. How was your first, how, how were you, when you first started, all that kind of stuff? Well, well, I wasn't pretty. My dad never, my dad never, all the success he had, he never pressured me. He wasn't like, son, you're going to be this. Like he, he always encouraged me. I want you to be happy and do whatever you want. He was a great yeah. dad. My dad was, he instilled a lot of good stuff in me and being a great, he was the best father. I mean, he, he was grinding, building this business. In high, I played high school sports. You know, you did too. I played high school basketball and baseball. He never missed a game of mine. He never missed a home game. He never missed an away game. I'm talking an hour and a half. You know, I'm from South Florida. So we'd be driving, you know, from Vero Beach. And so like West Palm Beach, it's like, you know, hour and a half away, hour and 20, hour and 30 minutes away. He would just leave work, go. He went to every away and home game. And so he was able to build the company and be a great father and go to my games and encourage me and do that. So like that, you know, that that meant a lot and and, mm. and that 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 showed me that sure. hey i can build this and don't like people think oh i have to sign my life over if i'm going to do this it's like most people are just bad at you know time management and we can talk about that a little bit but um you just got to find out what you want and so for me i didn't know what i wanted for a long time that was my problem because that's what i was getting to cody yeah you know <clears throat> i didn't uh really know I, I was like, oh yeah, it, it was it was the obvious thing for me, and but at the same time, it was probably in my mind the easiest because it was right there. Mm. My dad was having success, and it, and it, and many people could hear this and be like, oh, he's just his dad, and he's spoiled, you know, he gave him everything, and like it was actually quite the opposite. My dad would be like, oh, you're not gonna do this, okay, well, have fun being broke, you know, he he wouldn't let me starve in the streets, yeah. but he was like, like I remember one time I was partying too much in college and or wherever, and you know. He was like, oh, well, I'm not paying your eviction notice. You know, mm. you need to get get it together. Or, hey, like, if you're not going to take this seriously, that's fine. You, you know, you know you're, just, you're just kind of on hold. And it's kind of – I was okay with that for a while. When I started my first two years, like, weren't great, man. Like, you know, I, I was licensed as a – I was – just had my, you know, obviously my 214. And I was – you know, I worked in the homes. And I did okay, but my schedule sucked and very undisciplined and – I wasn't able to think big, you know, I know one of your models is think big. I wasn't thinking very big and um, just kind of skating by. Uh, 2008 happened and James Whitley, who's um, yeah, obviously my best friend and business partner. And he, yeah, he's from a great guy. Too. Yeah. And he's from Orlando. Great guy. And he's from Orlando. And 2008 happened. He's working corporate America and, you know, and eventually he got, he got let go. And some merger happened. He got let go during all the madness of 2008 in the finance world. And he, my, we, my dad and I we were going to an Orlando Magic game. We were playing the Lakers. We wanted to see Kobe. And um, uh, James, we, James met us over at the Grand Bohemian Hotel in Orlando. And basically, my dad's like, oh, he rolled up in like his Bentley. And James, I like, just got let go. And you know, he, we didn't really talk about that. But James, like, how's business? He's like, better than ever. And James is listening to all this. He's like, but we're starting this telesales thing. We need someone to do it. And long story short, we're like, you know, basically offered the position to James. And James was like, when can I start? That and that was the start of the best partnership I could ever That's imagine, awesome. you know. And so that was birth. Still, lots of growing pains and red tape. You know, had, we only had one company that was experimenting, you know, with it. So it was tough at first. This was what year? Because this tells us a this long time ago too. Two thousand and really got to that late two thousand eight, early two thousand nine. Really, when it really got kind of going, and um, which most people were not doing. Final expense over the phone in two thousand eight, two thousand nine. No, no. no there's only a few time. companies that were were doing it, and we had a couple people teaching us that were sort of pioneers in that in that realm so in that industry and so we were um learning from them and it's kind of like you know bad script literally was coffee on it we started in the back of the customer service department of senior life services in the back we were the redheaded stepchildren i'm dead serious like at, at, the, at the meetings think about the meetings that you go to in orlando we were in the back very bad it's like and grant uh, like everyone's announced every team all the people and it was like, uh, and Grant Doherty and his friend James Whitley, you know, they called a special project. It pissed us off because they didn't even want to like acknowledge us. We were always, and then people finally found out years went by. They're like, oh, 
oh, that you do that telephone stuff, right? Oh, it was kind of like, oh yeah, okay, kids, you know. <laughs> and so I mean, literally, it was from zero, you know, and you know, through learning and gosh, rolling our sleeves up and 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 working with people and and you know, perfecting the scripts and the trainings and through a lot of different uh, resources, you know, we just got better. Then we and we hired one person. Then we had we moved from the customer service to a small office of about could hold about 14 people mm. it was like not it was like 800 square feet it was so tiny it was like as big as this room it was maybe just bigger than the room we're in right now Crazy. and um you know went from there and <laughs> eventually moved to another place which was next to the probation office which was nice it was a bigger space and we started growing a little bit we're still raw though we're still yeah. learning the whole thing man yeah, but yeah. but like everyone puts so much pressure on themselves they, they everyone like right now they're getting into it like i need to be successful right now mm-hmm. right now right now and sometimes it just takes a little bit of time you know but right now the systems that are in place because there's so many companies doing it now as you know yeah. that it's like the only thing you need is work ethic just have some sort of a decent personality can't control that but if you have a good personality you're humble you're coachable and you show up and work you can the sky's the limit, and especially if you want to become a coach or a team builder, which you know we offer and we we encourage yep. people to do. And you know, anyway, so we we I remember moving, you know, I remember doing ten thousand a week. I was like, yeah, total. I'm talking about annualized premium, which is not that much. We have yeah. people doing double that one single people in a week now. So then I remember we got the twenty thousand. I was like, that was our goal. I was like, I, that's a, that means if you do you can do twenty thousand a week for you know fifty weeks. You basically have a million dollar team, and that was like huge. I'm like, oh my god, James, we got a million dollar, you know, team right now. Unbelievable. Yeah. And then I remember we kept going and going. And I remember when we hit hundred thousand. I remember we like celebrated, and it was huge. And you know, awesome. and then we go from you know thirty agents to you know just in telesales, you know, fifty agents, and you know, and you know now we have hundred and. Hundred. I mean, just in tell like in our telesales, but I mean, I mean, in all SLS, we have almost four hundred. But I mean, you know, probably have just in what we started over one hundred fifty, one hundred sixty right now, and we're, it's, yeah, and we're able to be a little Incredible. more, and we're able to be a little more selective as far as like, hey, like, you know, what are you committed to doing? We we're talking about sort of like commitments. You know, everyone's ten ninety nine independent contractor, so people are like, well, how do you get people that are ten ninety nine to work without like skating that line of that whole you know, I'm 1099. Oh my gosh. And they're you suing you. You're scared. You know, we, we did a thing where we started a letter, letter of commitment where it's kind of like, Hey, we don't really want to onboard you unless you're willing to do these things. Mm. And, and here's the thing. These things are not unfair things. They're things to be successful. Like you should want to do these things. It's basically like, I like to hear people's goals. When I first interview them, I like them. To, I like to hear what they want to make, what they need to make, what their bills are for the month and what, what their goals are. Shows that you care, which I do, but it also keeps them accountable right away. And it's like, okay, you want to know how you can do that? It's pretty, I can simplify it for you. And they're like, oh yeah, of course. It's like, and it's kind of like, you just go over that, those commitments. It's like, show up every day, you know, put in X amount of activity, talk time, um, commit to training and getting better. And, um, you know, just be on the Zooms. You have, your, have your camera on. It's crazy. People get so weird. Turn your camera on Zoom. It's people like, I can't believe they told me to put my camera on oh Zoom my gosh, at, at nine in the morning. You know what it's I like, do when people, when I, when people don't turn the camera I on? Boot them. And it's my Zoom. I boot them. But uh, I, maybe you just gave me something there. Yeah. Um, man, I'm, 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 being, like too, I'm being too nice. Sorry, SLS. <laughs> nah, well, nah, sorry, SLS. <laughs> So, I mean, but I mean, that's the thing though. I mean, like it, it's more of a posture because it's like, if, if you don't have your camera on, what are you saying? I'm not ready for the day. I may be laying in bed. I'm not prepared, nor may I not be listening. 100%. And so people get funny about that, but there's a dichotomy of how I'm thinking. Well, if you're in a great mood and you're sitting up and you're excited and you're like, you know, you're, 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 at you're, your, engaged. you're at your table. If you're working from home and you've got your laptop open, yes, you're engaged. Guess what you probably are more likely to do? Turn your camera on. Turn your camera on. Take notes. The only reason I don't is like I'm freaking Space hiding off. something. What are you hiding? Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hundred percent. So I mean, the letter of commitment says basically you're gonna you know be camera on Zoom, do these things if you do them, and just maintain. Stay. I always say stay humble, stay coachable, and just keep showing up. And if you can do that, and just like I know the cliche of getting one percent better every day, but just take one. Okay. If you don't like that one, take one step forward every day. Mm. Because if you take 100 steps forward and just picture there's an X where you're standing right now. Now, 100 days later, you're 100 
strides forward. Now, how many of us know people that have 100 days later, they have not taken one step? But if you look at the person that's 100 steps ahead, the person looks way ahead. Well, they are ahead. It's like, do the little, it's like, I always say micro adjustments. Like, mm -hmm. can, like can you read, I say, can you read 10 pages in a day? Like, if you read 10 pages a day, you'll go through 20 books a year. Yeah, awesome. And think about it. I could handpick 20 books right now. And if you read them, like I give you a little Jocko, I'll give you a little David Goggins, I'll give you a little Atomic Habits, you know, mm -hmm. little, little Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, just mm -hmm. stuff like the little John Talk Maxwell Leadership, little How to Win Friends and Influence People. If you just- little Brian Tracy. If, yeah, Brian. Yeah. If you, dude, think about that. And I only named six or seven right there. Yeah. If I gave you 20 to, that you could complete in one year, do you know how much of a, you're, you're going to be a, you're going to be bad, man. You're going to be dangerous. You'll be light years ahead as far as growth. And you're, you're going to, their perspective, there'll be a paradigm shift in like the way you think. And that's, that's the problem these days is people are, don't value their time. They don't value themselves. They, um, people are too distracted. Um, they're too, um, consumed with thing, low value activity is what I call it. Like, you know, like Netflix or playing games on your phone or scrolling. I told your team this morning. This if, was crazy. I know. This was okay, crazy. so so check this, and we all do it. And I and I probably scrolled. Well, I was traveling yesterday. I probably scrolled for three hours yesterday. You know, but if you scroll on your phone, we all do it. TikTok, Instagram stories, whatever, social media, Facebook. Um, if you scroll for two hours a day, and people are like that's not that bad. Guess how much that is a year, a month. You scroll. Think of nonstop scrolling for one month straight. It's crazy. It's wild. Now, if you, you know scroll for four, it's two months. You yeah. Know? You know what's crazy about that is, um, there's a, there's um, a couple billion people in the world using social media, 150 million new people in the last 12 months. And get this, the average person spends, to your point, two hours and 24 minutes a day on social media. There you go. They lose a whole month. You lose every year. Yeah, slightly over a month. So wow. check that out. You lose a month. And, so crazy. Well, well, the thing is, it adds up, Cody. It, it it all adds up, and it's not just like, oh, well, twelve, you know, twelve, you know, after twelve years, it's only one year. Well, not really, because it's like it compounds. You know, it's like, oh, you missed out on this time, and you could have been more productive. You could, I mean, it's you could have done a lot more. Sure. And it's still one twelve. It it's still one twelve. It's it's and that's crazy, and it's just you you know when you read books and you just like okay rather than doing that. I could read 10 pages and you could say, well, Grant, I don't like to read. It's like, then buy an audio book where they're like two bucks or so, they're so cheap and you'll have them forever. Yeah. And, and a lot of times people want to listen to them anyway. Like if you're cooking a meal, you're cooking dinner, like listen to 15 minutes of it. And people are, or you're at the gym, or you're taking a bubble bath or you're laying in bed. I don't care. Watching TV, you know, whatever you can, you, if you, if you, again, that's one of those things that's like camera on zoom. If you can tell me that you can't, Listen, listen to someone talk about something that's going to change your life. Is it like if my life depended on it, I would. Well, your life does depend on it. it you're, you're, the life you want to live. See, I always make that little joke too. It's like, well, if my life depended on it, I would. Well, your life does depend on yeah, it. You just look. It's not. It's just, you're just not going to die. <laughs> it just means your life depends on it. I mean, like the life you could live, it depends on it. Like if you do it and embrace it, and you're yeah. willing to do it, you have a, embrace a willingness to do things that that matter. Yeah, um, it's a good your thing, life, we, it's a good thing we get. It's a good thing we get more than one life on this earth. You know. Yeah, we're like a cat, man. We'll get probably get nine. I don't know. No, yeah, maybe you. I don't know. You're all over the place. Um, but <laughs> I, can't, I can never keep up with you, Cody. Um, I can't but, keep up either. Yeah, <laughs> he said I can't keep up. <laughs> um, but yeah, man. I mean, it's just it all comes down to the what are you willing to do? You know. I, I just think like if you equip yourself and you're willing, it's it's mindset. See, some people they're closed off, mm -hmm. and if you're closed off, like I know some people who they can't lose an argument. They have to be right. They're very prideful. They can't. Um, mm. You what like what what you can't grow. You can't advance. You can't succeed. You you won't have a following. Like you you can't influence. Like if you're just you're in quicksand when you're like that. And you know, it's it's just I don't know if it's like my I was taught this way, or I was a kid. I always I always would pray for my health, and I prayed for wisdom. Well, maybe it's wisdom. I don't know, but I was always just like, you know, God positioned me to be, you know, where you want me, and you know, keep me humble enough to really see things. Because I feel like when we're not humble, and you know, stuff like that, like we we miss things, and we just yeah. pack, and we missed it. Hundred percent. And you know, I always just hope I 
I, you know, I was like to try to stay like a normal person. Like when people, like even when you compliment me, it makes me feel super uncomfortable because I'm like, dude, I'm just a dude, man. I'm just, I, I want to be someone that people like to work with. I don't even say work for, I say work with. Yeah. Because everyone I see is a partner. Everyone I see is someone who like, you know, because I have people that started and started from the bottom. Now they're here. So, That's so right. to speak, uh, That's right. <laughs> they're, 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 they're like in basically partners. Like we're all partners. We're all peers and equals and we bounce ideas off each other and we work and we find out ways that we can be the best. And so as the, the longest answer to your question about, you know, how do we get such PPA is that we, we invest in the people. I mean, yeah. we're just, we're so, we, we truly invest in the people. We're not including like, leads. Of, yeah. Oh my, well, yeah, we're going to talk about leads. Nobody does that. Well, yeah, well, we will. I mean, again, there's, there's, again, I get it. People see both. There's different models of, you know, the get the leads and, or, or I don't, I want to buy my leads, but I want to be on a, you know, million percent, 130% contract, stuff like that. There's, there's different ways and there's no wrong way. I just think it depends on the person really. Dude, no matter what you do, if you're making, if you can make multiple six figures and you're not homeless anymore, who cares if you're on a 130 or a 50? As long as the system is right for you yeah. and you're doing and your life is getting better. Yeah. I'll make, I'll make a comparison right here. I think it's a good metaphor. I don't want to forget because I have, my brain is crazy. So it's kind of like having a trainer me in the gym. If I'm being pushed by someone, I'm going to go harder. Not that I don't know how to do, do work to work out, how to work out, but I'll cut out of a set. Sometimes I'm tired. I'll look at my phone. I don't have, I need a trainer to be like, get off your phone. Let's go push. No, no, you're doing two more. I need David Goggins. I, oh, Goggins. I would be like the incredible Hulk if I had Goggins. Um, <laughs> Goggins, if you're listening and Hey, hit me up. Let's go <laughs> Vero Beach. <laughs> I need you Goggins to move in. Um, but no, I mean, there's some people that go to the gym and absolutely crush it. They need no no sort of influence whatsoever. Yeah. And I'm not talking about just going to the gym. People that could like, you get the Justin Von Huygens of the world, you know, who are just big muscle men. And he, Crazy. you know, wakes up and just crushes it. And, you know, crushes for me- 14 eggs and, and, and weights. <laughs> oh yes, oh yeah, but before 9 a.m. And, or you need someone that kind of pushes you and it's like, there's, and there's no, like I said, there's no wrong way. It's like, if you like someone pushing you, if you want accountability, like I need accountability, bro. We all need yeah. accountability yeah, yeah, yeah. and accountability. And here's the kicker. People won't like accountability at all in the flesh. You'll hate right. how accountability feels, but guess what? It's like, do you like money? Do you like, do you like that to be the person you want to become? Do you like Correct. like overall success, which you define for yourself, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, do you like that? Do you want to be your best version of yourself? Like, okay, then you should, you should literally not just embrace accountability go seek it out go find it go put it in place what type of accountability go get an accountability buddy gym buddy or someone who tell your goals yeah. to go use social media for a positive put put your goals out there in social media don't think you're being oh i don't be that guy you do it get uncomfortable that's how you grow um you know you go right. you get your your coach or your sales trainer if you have a coach or a sales trainer like share your goals with them say ask for a meeting with them once a week just just don't hold your feet to the fire like that's stuff that you need yes in sales like in our industry like i just believe most people need that now here's the thing if you're mm -hmm. working from home you definitely need it do you study better in your room with the TV on and the music playing or at the library? You study better in a focused environment. Same thing. True. If you're So for those that, that's why I started doing the 50 uh, meetings with the people every week, uh, the 50 Zoom, Zoom uh, meetings with my people. There's up to 50 slots because most people are working remotely. And I'm sorry, you may be great. Some people don't need this, but most do. And so we, so we, that, so again, like that's I said, cool. answering your question again is like, Cool. We put, we make it very hard to fail. If you're doing these things, you yep. should not be failing. Yep. You know, it's the only thing is if there's something up here that you're not allowing or a poverty mindset has sort of infiltrated your, mm -hmm. your brain or you, you know, it's a, and a poverty mindset, by the way, is when you, it's not about being poor. Like the, like you can be rich with a poverty mindset. Like, you know, there's an abundance mindset where the wealth mindset and there's like kind of the poverty mindset. It's sort of like a, it's sort of like a broken way of thinking and a broken way of doing things mm -hmm. where it's like, it's not enough. Like, Oh, I can't, I can't afford it. Price tag flipping mentality. Um, too expensive, too expensive. Like, like Ed Milet, like, and he said, he gave a great speech at that one ten X. He talked about, mm -hmm. um, don't have a price tag flipping mentality. Look at things, everything in your life in terms of their worth, because you, you have a badass new car. Can I say it? Okay. Yeah. He has a bad, you have a Tycon Porsche Tycon. We got to ride, ride it yesterday. Mm -hmm. And, now that was it cheap or expensive? Expensive. It was expensive. I know it's <laughs> it was, relative. It's not cheap, 
It's an ex- it, no. I'm saying it's it's it's, it's, yeah, it's, a, not, it's not cheap. cheap. It's it would cost money. If it's it, it had a Bugatti or something. Oh, oh of course cheap, not a Bugatti. Yeah, yeah, no, but I'm yeah. saying it's 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 yeah. cost. It has its cost. Yeah. And now you bought it because of its worth. Mm-hmm. You did not buy if it was just based on cost. You'd go with cheap. Oh, I'm gonna True. buy something super and buy Ford Focus or something. Um, no, we we that you made an analysis of this is this has a <laughs> wow. Okay, this costs a little bit of money, but. I work hard. It's worth it, and it's going to keep me hungry. And I, and, you mm-hmm. know, I take pride in it, and that's why you do it. And so that is more of like that's for instance, you, someone with a poverty mindset, no matter how much money they had, could not do that. They could mm-hmm. not pull the trigger on that purchase because they just couldn't do it. They cringed. They're doing this. They're oh my god, I can't that's even think. Such to do that. a good point. And so I like to invest in people too, because people are worth it to me. And um, you know, like I, I. I I, I don't want the person that's perfect. Like I want the person that doesn't know because I was that person. James was that person. We were, you know, we, so many people that go, people look at us and they're like, oh, well, how, you know, this and that. I'm like, please do look at me. I, I like you. I like to throw myself under the bus and tell you all of the things that we did wrong because it gives you hope. And it's like, anyone can do this. I can, if I, mm-hmm. if we go to lunch, Cody, and we go, and I go talk to the person that brings our food out. I don't care what restaurant it is. And the person is nice and they're friendly and then thank you so much. And they seem maybe they're working a double shift that day. I'm confident. And as long as they're just go and they seem nice and they're coachable, I'm confident I can turn that person into a six, any one of those people into a six figure income producer at least at minimum. Like I'm dead confident. That's why so, I go around and I'm just like, hey, you know, I don't try to steal people from their jobs, but sure. I'm like, Hey, I think you'd be great doing what we do. I mean, you, you are, thank you so much for great service. I think you're, you know, you're, I'm doing a sales pitch. I'm doing a lead pitch now. You know, I think you're great at what you do. You do amazing, you know, in our company. And now if they're interested, they would say, Oh, what do you do? What's your company? If they weren't, mm. I allow them to That's either good. take it or not. And the, if they're like, oh, thanks, thank you. Like if, if they're not interested and they're happy where they are, they'll just say thank you and they won't say anything else. Good but point. most people are going to inquire, you know, and... That's and then point. from there, it's just kind of like, that's how, that's the, people think, where do I find my next best shining star? Man, you know how much money I've spent on Indeed and ZipRecruiter? And we find plenty of good people from there, but some of the best people you meet in person because you True. get to see how driven they are. You, you know, you can go with your gut and be like, I don't know, but this person's got something. Like, I, I yes. want to take a chance on them, you know? Yes. And then, I don't know. And, and like, so those are the best type of referrals, on my opinion, are, are referrals of other people because they're literally referred. And the person that referred them is like kind of going on the limb being like, okay, well, I'm referring, I don't want to look bad, That's right? True. So they're referring somebody, but also when you yourself can go into the field and do it. And some people don't like to do that because it's uncomfortable. Well, if you want to build a big team, you just, you're going to have to start doing that. My dad, when he goes to any airport, I mean, my dad's insanely good about that. I mean, it's almost like, dad, stop. I mean, to this, like you're a little kid, even still, we go through airports. It'll be the per. we'll be in like Detroit, Michigan, and we're going through the security line and he'll be like, oh yeah. The guy's like, like your jacket. He's like, oh yeah. He'll be, dad will be like, it's, it's custom. And he's like kind of joking. Like, man, I need to get me one of those. Like, come work for our company. They're like, seriously? He goes, Grant, give him the card. <laughs> and it, I mean, he's done that like a hundred times. It could be a bartender, anybody. Wow. And so- I mean, and that's the beauty is like now it's like if you just have those qualities, people go, I, I, I'm, just, I'm just missing my boat. Like if you're looking for something, that's why the industry, our industry is so cool. Mm-hmm. It's like if you just have those qualities. Oh, it's amazing. You have, it's a, is it a, isn't it a choice to be coachable? Yep. And now sometimes you can be closed off because you've been hurt or you've been burned. But it's a, cho- sure. it's a relative choice to be coachable mm-hmm. and relative choice to be friendly to, to an extent, of course, you know, have a personality. And it's a relative choice to show up to work. So yeah. most of these things are choices. So yes. everything's about choices, everybody. So if you, um, you know, just have those basic qualities, you can, you can, you can be amazing. You can be amazing in the industry, and people don't understand that. that. And that's why we're big on testimonials. We love to give testimonials. Uh, we do a quarterly like workshop where we have people come in, like all our people like come in, um, like my team. Cool. We have them come in and. Part of that is testimonials. Well, how's your pro- every three months? How's your progress? How's this going? How's your life getting better? And and when, because we have a handful of new people that come like every time, and we love to show people like we're completely transparent. Like this is like please yeah. just tell your story raw and uncut, and we want to hear it. And people get encouraged because they can relate because people come from all walks of life and can do this. And so 
you know, that's, that's the thing I'm really enjoying is that when we started off, it was about making money, just money. Yep. And once you make enough money to where, you know, it's covering your bills and you're comfortable and you're growing. And for me, it doesn't, money alone doesn't do it. Like, I'm not like, I need more money. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I, we all need yeah, more money, but, sure. but I'm more about how many more lives can I change? How many yep. more people can I touch? How many, how many more cool stories can we create? Correct. You know, and I know you have a bunch of them and, and you've told me about just to just today. And if we keep talking, we'll find, we'll, there'll be more. And in mm -hmm. the upcoming months and years, there's going to be more. That's what drives me, man. Like that's, I'm, I'm yeah, dead serious. Too. It's like lives changed and, and, and what can, what can I bring little old me? What can I bring to the table to, to pour into? I think they, I'm just, I like to pour into people. Yeah. You know, yeah. and everyone that I'm teaching, they could teach me a million things. Sure. But when it comes to final expense, life insurance, telesales, and sales training and stuff like that, like I can bring a lot of value. Hundred percent. And so, when you see the fruit from that, it's a it's a different kind of reward than a big check. Yep. You know, it's like, dang man, this person. You know, like I remember a buddy of mine who used to live with me. I met we met at the bar, and uh, you know we partied a lot and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then he ended up coming to my church but you know we both really needed it at the time probably uh, well, of course not probably we definitely did and um you know he was there and then eventually his brother came and his younger brother came so the three brothers came and all three of them met their wives at the church so Shut all three up. of them currently and they're still very good friends of mine to this day wow. so think about that and how god works and stuff like that. It's amazing and so like so so one life life change and i know it's uncomfortable but like hey man we need to go to church like we we're just like we both need it we went he went, brother, brother, all three met their wives there. And it was just, and they're wonderful. People wasn't like, oh, they just picked the, like, it was just unbelievable. And that was like, that was, that story really encouraged me. I was like, oh my gosh, I look at that. I'm like the fruit that came from that. Mm. I look at my team and there's crazy stories that like, it's like some of my best, like another guy I met from church, you know, like Josh Bell, I met at church. And so, and he's, cool. he's, he's crushing. He's having his best years ever. He's number Great one in the guy. ultimate challenge right now. Wow. Josh Bell is number one in the ultimate challenge. Met him at church and he was going through a really hard time when I first met him. And so for me, that's what does it for me. It's, it's, yeah. you know, like you sales records too. are awesome, man. I'm all about breaking records. I'm all about doing it, but that's. That's that's what it is for me, man. So that's, good, uh, that, man. that's really what makes me tick now. Cody. You can it's, tell, man. It comes out of you. You're passionate. Sorry, I'm, I'm, blab I'm blabbering. No, that's but, good, you know, dude. Um, that's... Spe speaking of changing lives and finding coachable people, if there's if they're out there listening and watching and they're like, man, I'd love to learn more about senior life services and or even, you know, talk to Grant Doherty. Where should we send them and what should they do? Wow. Well, I, I guess my social media i have a instagram uh grant it's at grant doherty g-r-a-n-t-d-o-u-g-h-e-r-t-y that's my instagram i'd love to i mean you can i just tagged you a few minutes ago too yeah tag yeah. me dm me i would love to hear from you and I, i'm like because i'm not a person that's like i'm not some shark like a lot of people are i just you know if it makes sense like let's do it you know and then um you know, we love, we love, uh, anyone. And as many people might be listening to this, like, Oh, I'm brand new. Oh, I have no experience. I haven't had success yet. Well, maybe you just haven't been planted in the right soil yet. Maybe. Yeah. And, and I, and there's two, cause there's different, there's different things. There's different ways of that people do things. There's different business models. And so, um, True. you know, free leads are good. We think so. Um, that's a good start. And you know, we, we do lots of coaching and we have a virtual call center where every day we are getting training. And so, um, yeah, you can see us at the slsway.com um, and obviously there. I mean, gosh, I'm sure I, I'd, I'd give you my phone number, but, you know, everyone, I don't get crazy hecklers. Uh, but no, I, we'd love to hear from you. And, um, you know, we're growing pretty rapidly. And, uh, yeah, we'll be, hitting yeah. The, we'll, we'll be hitting the million a week really soon. I mean, you know, we're getting like that would mean over 50 million at that point. But we're getting we're getting pretty close. And, um, awesome. you know, I appreciate your you, man, and you, and too, you having me on here and your, Thanks, your friendship. Bro. And you I mean, well. I mean, not just business partnership, but our totally. our friendship and everything like that. And, you know, we had a great dinner last night and I, I appreciate we that. Did. And and um, yeah, you're one of the real ones in the industry. You know, there's 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 a there's a good group, you know, and we, we kind of know, you know, a lot of who they are. And, you know, and then cool. there's you got to understand that there's a lot of good people in the industry. There's some not so honest people in the industry. Um, I don't like to talk badly, but so you got to watch yourself and protect yourself, but there's also a whole heck of a lot of good people that really do care. And so, you know, that's something that we, we take a lot of pride. Like you've heard me say it, but we take so much pride in, and I, I don't want to, do. I don't want to see one person fail, you know, 8% nation. Like we want, yeah. we want everyone to, to, you know, 
to make it. And that's why we don't just hire anybody. We hire people that, that want to, that truly want to do good. And that, you know, we always believe, hey, you know, how you do one thing is how you do everything. So we have to fix the mindset first and fix the, the soil that you're planted in. And, you know, it's like a flower can't bloom, blossom in a dark room. Mm -hmm. You know, you need sunlight, you need mm -hmm. the right soil, you need water, you need support, you need edification, you need accountability, you need a good coach and a mentor. True. You need to have goals and targets and commitments, which like I run an accountability group called Permission to Fire. And every week everyone has to post their goals uh, and all their commitments. Cool. And they gotta be detailed. It can't be like the same thing every week. It's gotta be very detailed, personal too. Mm. You know, and so, I mean, awesome. it, it's, it's a good thing, man. And so we're, if you ever, if you're looking for that or you want to ever, you know, you just have a question, even though you're like, Hey, Grant, I'm happy here. I have, I want to pick your brain on something. That's fine with me. I'm not going to try to recruit you from where you are. Um, you know, cool. I, I think everyone belongs where, you know, we don't try to like when we hired Justin, it's just, that was, just, it was organic, you know, it's just kind of like, we just want to help yeah. you. We just want to help you, you know, that's so. it. And you can, you guys do a lot of that, man. Well, dude, I appreciate you being here and speaking yeah, man. Mo, first time first, on the podcast. I'm a first timer in Missouri. First time. I know, which is special by the way. Yeah. Man. It's really cool. Thank you for being here. Awesome podcast. Appreciate you, man. All right. Boom. See Thanks you, buddy. Thank you guys for hanging out and listening to Grant Dockerty Let's go. and Cody Askins with Power Players. And we'll see you on the next episode. Adios. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one. You're going to love it. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. I'm so excited for today's CA Power Player Podcast. I'm your host, Cody Askins. We got a special guest. He is back on the channel talking about how to sell life insurance from home. Here's what I, well, here's what I love about this person. Okay, I'm telling you, this will be the, one of the best.